there YouTube land and welcome back to the Small Workshop Adventures. A uh, bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you're new to the channel, please click the like button and subscribe. It's really, really appreciated. So what are we doing today on this video? Well, this is actually a, a, a workshop tour. Now, way back at the beginning, I did a workshop tour. I think it's video number one, uh, and it's had a lot of views uh, over the over the year or so since I did that video. But as with all things in life, a lot of things change. And I thought, actually, what would be great is here we are in March of 2023. Um, and I would do a, a video, uh, a workshop tour of where I'm at now. So I'm going to go over maybe some of the things are similar, but you'll see the development. If you can look back on that past one, on the very first one, and then you see here the, the evolution of anyone's workshop is, is, is a perfectly normal and legitimate thing, isn't it? You, you just build and you grow. Um, so my workshop has grown as I've grown, as this channel has grown, as you guys have been following me. Well, all the things that I do and all the things that I make out of it has, has continued to grow. And my channel, The Small Workshop, workshop Adventures, has been about, you know, proving that size doesn't matter. <laughs> Size doesn't matter. I'm in a small workshop and yet it doesn't limit me and it doesn't have to limit you what you do, what you make, what you build. Yes, you've got to do it out on some of the outside spaces, but actually it's about how we think out of the box. And although I've got a small workshop and I'm going to give you a tour, as you can see from my channel, if you're here for the first time, the, the out of this workshop flows enormously big projects as all shapes and sizes, all sorts of things have come out as a result of my small workshop. So I'm going to give you a tour and a show around of my workshop and uh, for your viewing and hopefully you will get some ideas for yours. So the first thing I'm going to do is welcome you in. So as you can see from the outside, that is three metres approximately, or just actually under. And I built this uh, a couple of years ago now. And we have approximately three metres coming back the other way. Looking there, looking down, and the door. So we've got three metres by three metres, but it isn't actually three metres squared in here, as you can see, because Due to the boundary lines and how I had to build this because of space, limited space, um, it cuts back across that angle there. So it's actually only about a metre and a half wide at the back and comes out to about three metres down there. So we will show you around and show you all the various parts of it and say hello to Axel. So we start with the most important area, I would argue, in anyone's workshop is the bench area, as you can see. Well, this is uh, built in that I built this. You can see the size of it is two metres 20 and it is 600 depth, 600 running back to the back there. Uh, the important aspect of this workshop, uh, because of needing to utilise all the space I can find, is when I put my vice, it is absolutely parallel with the entrance, the door. So anything that goes in the vice, I can work. If it's too long, it can go straight out the door. So I built that exactly. So when I was building the workshop, I made it exactly that space, that wall, the door had to be exactly level with the bench. And here I am tripping over my stool. It had to be level so that I could utilize space out the door as and when I need it. And I have needed to do that on various occasions. So that's the size and the positioning, the importance as we can see looking outside, we can also see there running outside, you'll see the bench stick is, is there along uh, parallel to the side of the door, the entrance of the door and the vice gives me the ability to have longer pieces going out the door if I need to work on it. 
The next and obvious thing uh, to consider uh, when you're doing your workshop, and I had to consider, was where easy accessibility for the tools you're working with. So around the bench, as you can see, is a number of shelves and storage of where we can put all the tools that that come and go from my workshop. So as you see, I put at the back of the bench, I've got, obviously you've got your power uh, at the back of the bench and you've got various shelves and shelving to put things on. Uh, as we go along the back, first of all, I created this place to, so that I've always got a place to put my drills because tools to end up all over the bench, don't they? And there's nothing worse than having a bench full of tools and you actually can't get on it uh, to do your job. So that's a place to a little tool storage, just nice and simple, just for a uh, for drill storage. Sorry, uh, drills uh, for my battery drills and an impact driver, so I can store that there. You can see various different things up the top here that I can store. You can put what you like up there. I've got lots of uh, waxes and things. Over in this corner where there is a video for this, and again, tools come and go, I've got some magnetic uh, tool holders, and these are brilliant. Uh, you could just store your tools all over there, and I can just reach out and grab whatever tools I want, and it's really easy access. Coming up above, fixing screws so i've got shelves full of screws and all sorts of stuff going on there and then as we come around here i've got my glues and various other things that i would need to use my glue pots easy access and then there's all number of tools up there there are allen keys and hole cutters more screws all sorts of small things that i can store up there um that various bits of uh, kit and tools that I need um, on that. So we've got those is what is really close to my bench. And obviously, as in any workshop, the, the shelving moves around and certain things come and go. But that is essentially where all this stuff is right, really close uh, to uh, my bench. So it's easy access. Coming this side. Simply just a place to store to hang my saws so they're out of the way, but easy again, easy access right next to the bench. So I put there, you've got some, and I hang various different clamps up there. You can see I use that side now. Some of them, a lot of them are in my van at the moment, but you can see where I hang uh, various uh, quick clamps and they just sit there, easy access. One, one place that I store clamps, and you can see that. Where do you store all those big boxes of power tools? Well, I've put them up there. So they're actually out of the way. They're not on the floor. They're at head height and above in the well, ceiling height, really. So I store my power tools. And you can see some videos to some of the, the tools that I've reviewed. Uh, but that's essentially storage for my power tools. I've also built this just hanging underneath, which is to store batteries. So for all your batteries uh, tools, um, I've got some uh, others are in the boxes, but I often store them up there so I can reach up and grab. Just a nice little easy storage for my batteries, just sitting underneath the tools. Seeing high up in the corner and the back, we've got all sorts of jigs and templates and things, uh, all the stuff that I use and uh, brackets, uh, that are in boxes that are out of the way, but I can grab when I need them for various jobs. Nice storage at the back there. So you see, you get an overview of that back corner. It might be a small workshop, but there's a lot going on in here. There's a lot going on. In this corner, I store all my clamps. So various sash clamps. I've got a number, as you can see, of various sash clamps. You can never have enough. And I'm always coming across a job where I think, right, I now I need some more. But there's a number of them there just all sitting in the corner and that seems like the best place in here is just in there just tucked in tucked away um and that face really fits perfect just to store my clamps if i had a bigger workshop i've seen in amazing workshop tours where they've got them all going along the wall haven't they? they've got perfect storage i don't have that but that doesn't mean you can't still have a lot of clamps in here in a small space it's about where you put them so that works for me and it works in this space and I can just grab the clamps as I need them and still have quite a lot to do the work I do. In one of my videos, I talked about 
wood storage. Who has lots of wood storage in their, in their workshop? Or does it get overrun? And I've got to be honest, mine gets off and overrun and then I have to sort it out. But I've created wood storage uh, above the door on brackets and again over on that long wall. So you can see there, uh, wood storage is going along there, along the back wall uh, of various bits of timber and wood that I want to store. Uh, have some nice bits there. Anything that's big, I'll just move my stool. Anything that's bigger sheets end up on this back wall, as you can see. So I use that uh, for bigger sheets or bigger pieces that I'm storing in here up against uh, for wood storage. So again, it's about thinking, where can I put things? But me doesn't mean I'm going to get overrun and I just simply can't get in here. So it's about using every space and every space having a purpose. I have hanging on my wall some sleds and some jigs. That's a router jig to, uh, to use uh, with a router. And there we have a sled for my table saw. So it's hanging on the wall. It's out of the way. And whenever I need to use it, I can just pull it out. Coming over in this corner, I've got more bits of wood that I stand up in the corner and various things. Uh, storage for my uh, my grinder to sharpen, my, my bench grinder to sharpen chisels. That's stored up there on the wall, as you can see there. And more storage and I store underneath. I've created this workstation uh, to store effectively. I don't really work in this corner, but everything has to have a place. And you talk about, you know, real estate is really precious when you're in a small workshop. Now, these are all movable and I have my drill press in the corner and my bandsaw, which again sit there. I can work in this corner if it doesn't set too much stuff going on. But I often bring them over to my bench because they're all portable and it's about what you can use. Now, would I like a bigger bandsaw if I had a bigger workshop? Yes, but I haven't. So it's about, but it doesn't stop. It doesn't have to stop you because you've got a limited space. You can see storage under there that I've created for more power tools and more things. I have also under there my dovetail jig. I don't know whether you can see that. Just bring it in there. Yeah, it's sitting under there. A dovetail jig uh, to make uh, dovetails, which I do occasionally for some furniture. Little simple ideas, like whole, keeping your, your sandpaper. It's really simple, really straightforward. Just a little bit of timber sticking out, hang that. And under here at the back, just all those loose bits of sandpaper. Where do they go? They end up all over the place, don't they? Well, there's a little place just to stick all the bits of used sandpaper that still have some life in it that I don't want to throw away. And that's just sitting at the back of my bench. Up here, we have more storage. We have another place. And again, I utilise all the spaces I can in the workshop. It's about utilising, creating spaces. My first aid kit, which is really important. More fixings and things that I'm taking and out. Um, sandpapers, belts, all sorts of tapes and things up on this side. Just a little st storage for my Japanese saws. One is here and one is in my toolbox. But a little place to store Japanese saws. And my carving knives, which sit nicely on the side there. Again, using that space. So what can I use that space for? What can I put there that will be useful? This little bit of kit, this little idea, <laughs> uh, is a extra pair of hands when I'm working with my table saw. So it's a gate, it's on, a, it's a swinging gate. Now how that works is when my table saw is out here and you're pushing things off and it's too long and you don't want it to fall, I literally swing that out It is now supporting the piece of timber as it comes off the end of the table saw and goes out the door and it doesn't drop. So it makes it a lot, lot easier to cut longer lengths of material on my table saw when my table saw is effectively out here in the middle of the workshop. And you can see that little gate. It's effectively like a man standing or a woman or, or somebody standing behind at the back taking the feed out of your table saw but that supports it to come off the end because i'm working on my own 
Coming over this side of the door, I've got various uh, workmates and saw horses that sit tucked in just nicely on the wall space. Again, storage, is just, but where can I put them? But, and they're out of the way. They don't ever get in the way for me there. They sit there and I can pull them out and use them as and when I need extra workspace to move things. But they saw lovely, just right there, as you can see. Under your workbench, <laughs> more space. How can I use it? How can you use it? Well, this is how I've used I've, I've done it in my workshop. You can see I've got some much bigger tools. And the best thing I could do in here, as lots of you have done, and lots of there's lots of workshops that do it, is to put them on casters. Really good, uh, high quality, strong casters. They roll around and move around. So I can bring them in and out and move them around as I need them. Um, you've got my uh, mitre saw there and you've got my table saw there and both of them move in and out on there. That is the uh, the workbench for the table saw. So it sits at a great height and works alongside so I can use also my bench as an extra table. Um, there we see that you pull them out and uh, that works absolutely fine. Underneath, I also store my door, dust extraction, and there's a tool bag there full of tools that uh, I take in and out of the workshop all the time. And we have a more storage at the back there underneath for various things. There's a whole spanner set there and lots of things, all sorts of stuff that I can use for storage. Under my bench, I built a sliding router table. Now, I don't use it very often, but there are occasions when I need to do some routing against a fence. So that is my table, my router table. As you can see, it's under there and it neatly slides out, as you can see. And there you can see is a router table on some very heavy duty uh, drawer runners. Take a lot of weight. It also serves as another actually workstation if I want to use that just for cutting or doing so supporting something extra so that slides in and out my fence which is there is actually tucked up underneath as you can see and you just undo it and then fix the fence so that's a small workshop tour <laughs> or the small workshop adventures tour <laughs> it's it's small but it doesn't have to limit you does it I think you think, oh, I'm just not going to be able to do anything. Well, actually, you can if you just think creatively and use the space really creatively and think. Now, if you, maybe you get some ideas of how you, if you're starting up a workshop, or maybe you've got a workshop and you think, I could do, I could organise this better. Maybe you could get some ideas from what I've just shown you. But it's about doing what works for you. It's not necessarily about copying what's in here. It's about looking at your space and thinking, how can I adapt some of those ideas and actually make it work for me in my small workshop? As they say, the only thing that limits us is our imagination. But sometimes I need a bit of a helping hand because as creative as I, as I like to try and be, sometimes I just can't think. But actually... I've been able to check out so much stuff from you guys out there and go, ah, I could do something like that. Yes, I need to adapt it and do something a little bit different. But yes, I could do that. And that's essentially how I've built this workshop. I've built it and then I've gone, oh, let me look and see what others have done. And uh, maybe I could adapt that idea for my space. So thanks for watching. This has been a workshop tour, a small workshop tour. It's about three, it's less than three metres by three metres. But actually this side, it's only a metre and a half wide. So it's actually quite small, but you can do it. I'm sure you can do it. So go and check out lots of other videos that I've got on my channel if you're here for the first time. And please subscribe. It's really, really appreciated. Um, loads of stuff on the channel. Lots of quite varied array of stuff on the channel if you're here for the first time. So from me, Mark, at the Small Workshop Adventures, take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye.